you learn uh, this year? I think um, getting them to understand you know, how uh, hard they have to play all the time, um, pushing buttons to try to get them to understand how hard they have to play. And I think we kind of um, you know done that uh, at home, but uh, understanding what we, what it's going to take to get to the next level to win and play well on the road. You know, so but I think uh, setting the tone with uh, you know how we operate all the way through the year, um, you know how they uh, followed the direction that I wanted them to go in uh, was all a positive. Um, couldn't have asked for anything uh, more for my first year of coaching from a group of players that uh, simply, you know, followed pretty much everything that I wanted them to do, and they went out and did it. And uh, you know how they were able to bounce back. You know, we have a bad quarter, a bad game, and they were able to uh, get themselves back together and get ready for the next game. Uh, no, I think I think because I had experience, you know, I started off as a head coach, so I knew what was going to come with the job. I knew it was going to be a, a a lonely street that you have to walk. You know, I already understood that. You know, even in the when I started off in the CBA, you know, I never forget one time I was uh, we had a game, we lost the game, and my my oldest son now, Andre, uh, we were on the way home, and I got in the car and I wasn't talking, and uh, he said, uh, "Dad, you all right?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, the boys didn't play well tonight." He said, that's all right, next game, you know. And so I understood that part. I understood the role of a head coach and uh, everything about a head coach, you know, that you're going to be alone at moments when you have to figure things out to get ready to play for the next game, the next day of practice, all those things there. So that wasn't a big adjustment there. Uh, managing the team and managing uh, everything else that goes along with the job, um, you know, being having to do that for the entire year, um, I'm glad I had the experience first uh, to understand that. Oh, yeah. Well, without a question. I mean, even just conversating with the guys as we start our little meetings uh, today and then continue those tomorrow and just them knowing uh, going into the next season what they need to work on, what we need to do as we add different things to our team, um, what, they, what it is that they have to focus on and work on. And, you know, coming back into a year uh, where guys leaving the season understanding what it is they need to work on, when they want to start working, how many guys want to get together. Uh, that, that's the conversation that I uh, was having and hearing with these guys communicating that to me, what they want to try and do. Coach Mark, mm -hmm. um, with regard to your defensive philosophy, yeah. um, it seems like the team gradually embraced that over the course mm -hmm. of the season. It got better and better with yeah. that switching against active bigs mm -hmm. and engaging teams a little bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing they got to do is, um, with all the guys, and I've communicated that to them, we've all communicated from the strength conditioning coaches, they got to have, all have to get stronger. They all have to take a commitment, a stronger commitment this summer uh, to get their bodies to look different when they come back, to, to feel different, to uh, uh, have a more of a physical presence. Now, I think sometimes, you know, you go into summer and you get yourself in really good conditioning and shape uh, body-wise and look from a physical standpoint, look in the mirror and you say, man, you may feel just a little bit tougher. That may help a little bit, you know, but also um, getting our um, the, the bigger guys, you know, and keeping all those guys healthy and getting those guys stronger. Because if you can rebound in the league, the first thing you start with, not individual defense, if you can rebound first, if you can rebound first, um, that's going to help your overall defense. The games that we were able to win and pull off here uh, because we were able to uh, limit play teams to one shot on most possessions. And when you can do that, that helps your defense. The other part, when we start uh, limiting our turnovers um, and start getting that thing down to a very low number, because now the ball is not being turned over the top of the floor. Rebounding, taking care of the basketball, that helps your defense tremendously. And uh, I think uh, as we communicate with, this, with our guys this summer, uh, those are some of the things they want to try and, and correct. You know, how do you make a better rebounder? You just, I told these guys they have to play basketball this summer and work on those things in the summer. They need to go out and play. You know, being in a gym, going shooting, doing shooting drills and things like that will help, yes. But they also need to play basketball. They need to get out and go play, um, you know, go to different places where the pros are playing in the summertime and work on some of these things in live game settings. There's a lot of leagues around in the summertime, different places that have actual uh, referees in games. And they get to go out and find some of those and play in those. We've all mentioned that your contract isn't guaranteed mm -hmm. for next year. So mm -hmm. Ever since I started playing basketball, I've been in a one-and-done situation. 
and I've always managed to f focus on what I need to do as a as a person, as a coach, as a player. Um, I've always uh, felt comfortable with what I'm doing uh, to have confidence in what my abilities will allow me to continue to, to do. Um, I remember coming out here on a one-year deal, and I've been here eight years now. You know, so um, I just focus on the work that I'm going to do and how I'm going to do that work, and not worry about that kind of stuff. I never have, um, you know, I never uh, look at, you know, secu what is security in this world? There's no such thing as security. But that doesn't. Well, but I want to coach. I don't care about the deal. I can go, go get a job and go work anywhere else. But I want to be a coach. That's what I'm doing. And so I focus on the coaching part more so than the security part. I had a team that followed me like I had a 100-year guaranteed contract because they did and, and did everything that I wanted them to do and bounced back um, to play basketball um, uh, for me this year. I think they went out and proved that uh, they enjoyed what I was doing. Uh, when I pushed them hard, they bounced back. So I think this group uh, showed me a lot. Um, and, and so we never looked at Keith as the situation he was in. They looked at me as a coach, and that's how I looked at them. Um, I focus on just the now. Um, you know, I have a contract, and uh, we're going to, at some point in time, we will sit down and, and conversate. Uh, but at this moment right now, I'm focusing on completing this game here tonight. I'm going about my business, uh, what I would be doing no matter what at this time of year uh, at the end and then com communicate to the team what they need to do this summer. Uh, we'll com communicate with them all the way through the summer until the date or whatever it might be and uh, carry on myself as uh, the head coach of this team. No, just, just communicating that uh, we're moving in a positive direction. You know, that things are moving in a, a direction that uh, is positive, not where we want to be right now. Uh, yeah, I talked to a few guys last night watching some of the games, trying to jockey for position last night. And uh, just communicate to a few, a few of the guys last night about uh, we want to be in that position. You know, we want to get ourselves in that position right there. And get, got a lot of response back from that. You know, so uh, we're moving. I, I think our team is moving in the right direction. That was more what I tried to communicate. Uh, not so much on here or there, but communicating that we're moving, we're not where we want to be, but uh, eventually if we continue to do the right things, me as a coach, you guys as a player, we as an organization, we're going to get there. No. I wish that was the case. Uh, I'm, I'm studying it all the time. You know, I think it's, uh, I've always done it that way. You know, I've always, I have my playoff note taking area that I, I do every year and I just put down notes and look at how teams do certain things uh, look at um, everything that certain coaches are doing why they do them in the playoff settings and it's different than what they do from following them all year during the season you see some inbounds plays because you know that's what you do you take your notes and you, you they come back a little bit later on so um, you look at certain teams that I've watched and I've studied as, a, as assistant coach and some of the plays they run in the regular season and then they go to the playoffs, and they may tweak the, the play, maybe two possessions or two situations in that play that they're running now. And I look at you know, little, some teams that do some of those things and uh, see that there's an adjustment that you have to make, especially when you're playing the same team uh, for a series, you know, for multiple games. And so I study. I stay in, as a, in a student mode. You know, I'll sit there and watch. And uh, now my kids are older, so they don't hang around me that much. So I get a chance to sit down in a chair and really watch the game now. Um, I think number one is experience, you know, number one is experience. Uh, number two is that um, they have players that have a super belief in what they're capable of doing. And um, they have the size. Uh, teams are built, you know, I look at a team, if I can use it, as Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City went from a team that was, uh, that was very, very good already, but they needed a playoff type team. They went out and made a huge deal and got a playoff tested big guy. So I think um, – that's where it lies with this, the strength and the size of some of these players, these teams that are going to uh, move into the playoffs uh, so that they can adjust to whatever team they simply play in the playoffs. And I think uh, that's something that I'll be looking at with our team. You know, I'll finish up the season, give a week, two, and then I'll start looking at uh, the college kids, just like I've always done, and then start look for some diamonds in the rough uh, in that fashion. From, from an overall team point of view, what are you most proud of? Uh, I'm proud that I, I – I, 
convinced in, uh, myself that I can coach an NBA, coach an NBA team, run an NBA team. So I'm proud of that, that, that there. I'm proud of uh, how these young men responded to me. You know, how we put this thing together this year and to get them to follow my lead of what I wanted to do, uh, I, I see that, um, that they were committed to what I was trying to get done. Um, I tried some things this season, and some of it worked, some of it didn't. But that's what every coach does when he starts off. He tries some things, see what he likes. Uh, it, was, it was a learning um, thing for me as well. I look at all the coaches who started off, uh, what they went through, talk to a lot of them when they started off and what they went through. And, um, and then so just, just once you continue to develop as a coach in the NBA, uh, things will start to come to you because now your team will start to come to you. You know, when you take over a team or move into a team, it truly isn't your team yet because you're still trying to develop that team to fit your personality. You know, you may be taking over someone else's team that fit another personality, but I'm in the middle of this group uh, slowly moving to the direction of how I think uh, we can possibly play all that'll fit me. All year you've looked ahead. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I, I'll take that break uh, in a little bit. It, it, it's because you, you find yourself just, I mean, even when I was in my role as an assistant, you, you, you're going, going 100 miles an hour during the season. Even when you, we have days off from back-to-back -back games, the coaches are not off. You know, coaches are still planning for the next day. And so you take a day off, but you, and now when your season is over, uh, you go home and you, like, just walk. I'm supposed to be somewhere. What did I, I? Well, I don't need to do this. You know, you, your routine continues to move on, but yet you have no place to go, nothing to do, and that's just normal. So, um, so I try to, you know, just go sit at a coffee shop and watch people for a moment, you know, and then eventually it comes back to you, and then now you say, okay, now I can decompress a little bit. And then, of course, you know, you, when you have family, you know, you look at that garage and you see things that you were supposed to be doing during the year, you got to f uh, figure that out. So, um, so it, it's never really, you're not, it's not really over because you're going to still be in a coaching mode. It's just that you come over to the uh, facility, which I, I'll do in about a week or two, and all the paperwork and notes that I've had all year long, I'll put that in the file of, of, of 10, 11 season and then start cleaning that out and put that in the box like I always do every year. And put that in uh, my storage somewhere, and and get ready for the next season. The uh, head coach point guard relationship is one of the most mm -hmm. important in all of mainstream sports. Oh yeah. Um, can you talk about your relationship with Seth Curry and mm -hmm. development? Mm -hmm. and how you've been involved in that? What you can foresee from that? Year? I thought I needed to push him a little hard this year because I had to get him to a certain point fast. I had to get him to that level to where he can run and manage a team. He can um, uh, take some responsibility uh, on the floor. And I thought he did that while not dropping off in his play. You know, I thought the fact that we had some new players here, uh, Monte playing at a very, very high level. Um, you know, Steph uh, still managed his numbers are all pretty much the same uh, from last year, which most of the time if a guy is not playing well, he has a big drop off in his production. But I think his numbers stayed the same. And so he was still playing at a very, very high level with Darrell Wright being the most improved candidate with a possibility of winning that. And then David Lee coming in and, uh, and chewing up a bulk, the bulk of, uh, of some shots in time. But yet he was still managed to do that. And I, there was several plays this year where I thought Steph was really growing and is growing uh, to be a lead guard in the NBA. You know, I thought um, having been in that, that seat before, experience-wise, of trying to go from a combo-type guard to a lead guard, uh, the responsibilities are so high. Uh, a point guard in the NBA is just like a quarterback. A turnover by an off guard, a small forward center, uh, not that damaging to your team as they are from a point guard. And I wanted to get him to see how important his play is from that position, how it helps the team overall. And I thought that, um, you know, I talk with him daily. I give him an uh, information card uh, for how I see the game tonight and just to give him some information as to how I'm going to see it, and I give it to him as well. So everything just grew with us uh, from last year, continued this year. And, uh, but I just think that position he's trying to transition to is a tough position. And I think he has done a really good job with trying to develop that. And, uh, you know, our relationship from however people thought it was is not what they, it really they thought it, what it really is. How nice was it that Steph was such a sponge? 
Oh, that that plays a huge role because he want wanted to wants to and wanted to become good at the position he's playing. You know, so you can share the information to him, and some guys want to stay in the role they've always been in. He really wants to transition and be one of those really good lead guards. One of his best friends, of course, is Chris Paul. So he wants to be in that category with that guy. You know, how do I get there? You know, coach, show me how to get there. You know, push me to get there. You know, so it's like I, I use the example of my kids all the time because I think I became a better coach uh, from my minor league days once my kids came along because as they grew – I didn't have to push them as hard anymore. I could back off. You know, now when I say it's bedtime and lights off, it may be a little minute delay now, where it used to be about 25 minutes delay. You know, but now um, they've grown to where they know they own, know how to manage themselves now. And I think that's the same case with um, with Steph, how he's going to develop and grow and continue to be a, a good lead guard in the NBA. Good. That's it. All right, gents.